Uh, we're talking about cankers. Um, cankers on trees, uh, perennial or target cankers, they have concentric rings uh, or they form callus wood. It's a wood that no longer has the ability to transport nutrients or water. Uh, Nectria is one of the cankers that we're talking about. Strumella and Utapella are two others. And then there's also something called an annual canker, which is different than the perennial. Um, Fusarium maple. And then there's others, uh, the chestnut blight, which we've heard about, I'm sure, with the American chestnut, uh, perennial, diffuse cankers, and hypoxylon, which will be on beech trees. You've seen beech that have, uh, you know, their bark starts to break up or they have fruiting bodies on them. Uh, it's also, these uh, types of cankers are also involved in sudden oak death and uh, some spruce and some fir get something called Cytospora, which is also a perennial diffuse canker. Uh, nectary canker is our most important stem disease. You see a lot of times the cat faces on birch and walnut. Um, if they're greater than one year old, if the nectary canker has been there for more than one year, you'll see concentric rings. Um, most important on young trees because it will basically uh, stunt their growth or it can actually kill them uh, if it becomes too bad. Right here's a picture of it. You can see the concentric rings right here. Just kind of forms around, but that is the uh, disease at work, the canker uh, forming. And it will actually take that and as it grows, it'll go around the whole tree and it will girdle it to the point where it won't be able to take any nutrients up through uh, the conductive tissue. Uh, chestnut blight, it affects the bark and the, the limbs and the bowl of the tree. It will, it's just, it's a fungus that comes onto it and it basically cracks it open. Um, there's orange fruiting bodies on it and then once they kind of uh, inhabit or, or inoculate the tree itself, they will start to, to grow and they will basically incorporate themselves into the tree the bark will then start to split apart. It is something that girdles the tree, it kills it, and uh, that's the main reason why we don't have any uh, American chestnut left that are not affected by the blight. This is in addition to some of the diseases that we have, we have a lot of insects that affect our trees in Pennsylvania. Uh, the one main one that is of primary importance because it's the most abundant and the most destructive of all the insects as far as uh, defoliators go or attacking tree leaves is the gypsy moth. You can see here the color of the defoliation can occur. Um, you just see in the middle of summertime, yet it looks like fall or winter. We've lost all the leaves, but that's just because they've been uh, chewed off by the gypsy moth. Uh, gypsy moth defoliation goes in cycles. They usually have a pattern of every you know, three, four, five years, somewhere in there they will kind of make the rounds and come back and have heavy defoliation. In years that they're not at their peak, you still have defoliation, it just is not as severe. Two things that will kill the gypsy moth or two things that we use to control them. One is we introduce the fungus that I was talking about before and there's a scientific name. When, those, when you see uh, the gypsy moth that are dead from the fungus, that have been hit by the fungus and have died, they will hang straight down off the tree there's also a virus called NPV that we use as well. And if that we are, if we introduce that into a stand with gypsy moth and they die from that, they will hang in an inverted V, just like this. They'll hang at their midpoint and both ends will hang down. So you can know what has been attacking your gypsy moth if you see them dead on the trees like that. It's a insect that has been defoliating or I'll say kill well defoliating I guess is a good word for hemlocks um, because it causes needle casts or the needles to fall off because what it does is it's an insect that will be at the base of the needle it inserts uh, a proboscis into the uh, stem or into the twig that the needles uh, stem from there and it will suck out all the nutrients from that twig, thereby, therefore not allowing the needles to have any of those nutrients, and then they will eventually fall off. Those little white masses on the upper right-hand corner, those are all uh, woolly adelgids. They are inside that little white mass. This is 
how they, they normally appear and they are feeding on the stem that uh, is in the center of all those needles right there. You see how they're not out on the ends of the needles but on the stem itself, that's where they feed. Um, Potter County, they're saying here, Potter County in 2008, it was detected. It's already been detected in all these counties in red. So almost all of Pennsylvania has had uh, some sort of detection of hemlock woolly indelgent. Different options, um, there's a biological control. They introduce beetles. A certain beetles will eat these insects, so they've introduced those to kind of take care of the problem. Uh, here's another insect, the elongate scale. Uh, these tiny little uh, little dark things are, called, are, are the little scale insects. They are on the needles of the hemlock. And this is where they've been found in Pennsylvania, like Cumming County, where we are, is a is one of the counties they've been found. Uh, there was up above this emerald ash borer. It attacks our white ash trees. Green ash, black ash are also effective, but white ash is its preference. And basically, it's a tiny little bug. You can see the uh, size of it here. It's smaller than a penny. Okay, it doesn't fit quite across a penny there. And down here in this picture, you see the, when it bores into a tree, okay, the larva will bore in. And then all these little white lines are little galleries that they'll make. They eat the wood underneath the outer bark. And that wood is what is conducting uh, or sucking water from the ground. It's transporting water from the roots up to the top of the tree, and it's transporting nutrients from the leaves, which are creating sugars, down into the roots. So without that wood being there, because it's now been eaten by the um, by the uh, emerald ash borer, the tree can no longer conduct that material through its tissues, and it will eventually die. Management options is to chop up your wood into firewood and burn it, or chip it. I'll finish up with this. Forest tent caterpillar and uh, eastern tent caterpillar. Just some differences and what they infect. Uh, forest tent caterpillar, uh, primarily sugar maple, oak and other hardwoods they will attack, but if you look, it's sugar maple primarily. So if you have those types of trees on your, on your uh, property, you may want to look and see what kind of insects you have uh, that are feeding on them. Um, if you take a look here, you see this design on their back. It almost looks like a key shape or a keyhole type of shape. That is significant because that signifies that it is a forest tent caterpillar as opposed to an eastern tent caterpillar, which looks similar. But eastern tent is basically a little silken mat that they will create on a stem and uh, reproduce and lay the eggs in there. There's other questions or issues that need to be addressed on insects or disease. You can uh, contact DCNR or get on their website and look them up and see what they have to say.